Holy buckets, did you see that? Did you see that here? I want to show you again. Done. Done. I just hooked it up. I'm a genius. What kind of degree do I have to get to do this? Am I qualified? Uh, I think you got it. Passed. I passed. I need a certificate on the way out, please, that says that I know how to install a solar panel on your operator. I thought we'd take you to US Automatic, who is a company that also makes swing gate operators. And this is a company that's doing things right compared to the other company that I showcased a little while ago. They do things a little bit better and they are more focused on safety with their products. And so I thought I'd meet with some of the people here as we we're driving through Dallas and show you a little bit about their product. And Greg is gonna give us a tour of their facility here and show you a little bit about what they do and why their products are maybe a little bit different than what you're experiencing in the big box stores. So Greg saw our video on the channel and reached out to me and said, hey, you know what? I don't know how familiar you are with our products, but we have these great products. And since you're having some trouble with the other products, we would like to maybe show you what we do. And luckily enough, I have actually installed some US Automatic. My name is Mike Storms. I'm one of the founders of US Automatic and uh, founded it back in the early 90s with David Taylor and Mike Qualabom. Back in the late 80s, the choices for solar power gate openers was very slim and I had problems with every brand. Most of them were made in Texas back then. There was, I think, one out in Utah, but I tried it just about every brand on my own jobs and had continuous battery drainage problems. And you know, our answer back then was bigger panels and bigger batteries. And then whenever I started developing this product with Mike Quattlebaum, he comes from a, a very technical engineering background with uh, Texas Instruments and Raytheon. So he looked at things totally different and his idea was we can save power with our electronics. We can save amperage that we use with our openers. We've got photo eyes now, everyone wants apps. These things drain power. So now we actually supply a 10 watt panel with a standard. And in some cases we recommend going to a 20 watt panel. But still, in all cases, if you compare our product, you know, apples to apples with any other product out there, we can do more cycles per day anywhere in the world than any other manufactured solar powered opener. By going with this receiver, this is a 1 million. Now we need seven minutes of sunlight. It's a big difference between seven minutes of sunlight and two hours of sunlight, especially the farther north you get. So if you're up in you know, Oregon or, or Washington State where you have a lot of trees and a lot of shadows, you only get two or three hours of sunlight, that's the difference between having a solar power opener or not having a solar power opener. But the same thing, uh, I think the second device was the seven day timer. We had some people that wanted to lock the gate open at a boat storage or a mini storage and they would find that the seven day timers pull 40 milliamps. Well, all day long pulling that 40 milliamps out of it. Again, now we're looking at needing about four hours of sunlight to put back in what that thing's using. With our seven day timer, again, we're one million. We now need another seven minutes. So it's huge differences in the accessories, huge differences in how much current we draw on our boards when we're just sitting still, uh, differences in the motors, the amount of amps we use while running. All these things add up to less current being used, which means smaller batteries, smaller panels. So a couple things for you to note is, is that some of the other controllers out there don't want you to use a whole bunch of accessories because they haven't planned properly for all that usage, all the power usage that those accessories are going to be used. In fact, one of the uh, controllers out there, spooky controllers we'll call them, doesn't want you to use photo eyes because it says specifically on the photo eyes you can't use those when you're using a solar power operator because they're going to draw too much and they're going to leave your battery dead and you're not going to get the cycles. Mm -hmm. US Automatics has thought of these things and made sure that they can put together a package for you that's going to run your gate flawlessly during all times of the year and when you have low sunlight hours and things like that, um, when you have overcast days. So one of the things we'll do for you is we'll put together some packages and a link down below and we'll show you the packages that you can use for your gate. So we'll have probably, what do you have, three packages? Maybe a good, better, best? Yeah, pretty much what you have. Really it's more like small, medium, and large. <laughs> so we'll, 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 do a, we'll do a couple packages uh, with some recommendations. We'll put a link down below on YouTube uh, so that you can purchase those packages if you do have a farm or ranch gate you're trying to automate all the way up to a really nice gate. If you've got some heavier gates and stuff like that, and we'll try and put uh, maybe some information about what gates they're best suited for. Um, and then always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below and we'll try and answer them the best we can. Or you can always call up one of our stores. But they're going to walk us through all of this stuff today and kind of help you understand what makes their product different from some of the other brands out there. We're going to, you know, like the Spooky Controls and uh, the Mighty Donkey. So um, 
we'll show you some better options because that's what we're about here. We're about bringing you better options that work better in your application. Not just cheap, because cheap doesn't work good if you have to buy it four or five times or it leaves you high and dry when you need the gate to open. If you're still out there operating your gate manually and you're pulling pins out all the time, that's not what we want. We want to make sure you've got something that works great. So they'll show us all about that. This, this is the Patriot arm. It's got a polished stainless steel extension tube. So that's really important because it won't corrode over time and it won't get rough. And keeping that, that polished surface is critical to maintaining your end seal integrity. If, if you get pitting and, and rust or whatever on, on the uh, extension tube, it'll tear up your seal. If you tear up seals and get water into things, then things, all kinds of things can go south in a hurry. So we try real hard to, to keep water out of our actuators. Um, up in the end here, there is a felt pack that is grease packed um, when the unit, you know, from the factory. And that helps keep the tube lubricated. It helps, it helps again keep moisture out. And there's a stiffener so that when the unit's extended that 24 inches all the way out, you don't get a, you don't get a kink in the arm. It, it stays good and straight. The motor is a pretty good sized motor and that's important because the size of the motor determines the power of the unit. And, the, and power is a function of force and speed. So, so that's where we get the, the speed and we also are able to have the force. The gearing is all cut metal gearing, spur gearing. So good, strong gearing. We don't have gear failures, period. The units are repairable. So if a car hits a gate, typically what will happen is that the tube will bend and you might, you might bend a screw in an extreme case. Um, but you can, you can pull, the, pull the cover tube off. You can, pull the, you can pull the screw out and replace it. We repair units here. We can teach you guys how to do it. Now let me just pause right there. Mm -hmm. That is something that other brands do not want you doing. They make zero replacement parts because the goal is if it breaks, they want you to buy another one. They don't want you repairing the arm. These guys actually want you to be able to repair the arm. And I think that's important. The Little Ranger here was developed about 13, 14 years ago. So it was launched, I think, in 08. And uh, it was designed to be a more economical product designed for smaller gates. We rate it for a 16 foot, 800 pound gate. Okay. And uh, we'll run that gate all day long we, you know, without strain. So that's a, that's a rating that we expect to get 10, 15 years of life out of the, out of the unit running. And, uh, okay. But I will, I will say we have very, very little wind damage from, on, on this product. The main difference, you know, we came out with the Ranger primarily because, again, more people were getting into the solar market. They were making cheaper, smaller machines. We had some guys that would sell one brand on a on a low budget job, and then our brand on a higher budget. And they wanted us to produce something that would be in a, a lower price range. Uh, you do give up something when you go with like a 16 inch actuator mm -hmm. over a 24 inch. Yeah, yeah. As Greg pointed out, you're now attaching, you know, your attachment point is closer to the hinge. Um, so it doesn't have as much leverage on the gate. We slow it down because we don't have as much leverage on the gate. So now we're opening in 16 to 17 seconds instead of 12. But the Ranger still, we, we didn't give up anything on quality. We still have a good motor. We still have strong metal gear transmission in there. Uh, we, we don't have the limit switches built into that one, yeah. which is an upcoming discussion where you actually do our limit switches on the circuit board itself with the Rangers because what we have is a potentiometer. We still have something telling us what position the actuator was in. It's just instead of having switches, we have a potentiometer that tells us, what, are we retracted, are we extended? And we still have an adjustment at both ends. We still have a opening adjustment and a closing adjustment. Yeah. Extend and retract so, is the problem. Very quickly, what kind of, this is the lighter 16 inch Ranger and what, what would our specifications for gate be on that one? That's an ideal actuator for like a, powder river gate yep your steel tube gates 14 foot 400 pounds on the smaller ranger mm -hmm. 16 inch ranger now the larger this is a 24 inch that's a 24 inch also that's the ranger hd and it will also handle a, a 16 foot 800 pound gate without any problem different board for the patriot and a different board for the ranger series okay, okay? one thing that's kind of unique about us and actuators is that we don't build the actuators Thompson Industries builds the actuators. 
So, so Thompson is a company that builds actuators. They build a wide variety of them, little ones, big ones, long ones, short ones, and they build actuators. And so instead of us trying to reinvent the wheel and try to duplicate their processes and, and, um, and their, their controls and everything, we let them build because that's what they know how to do. And, and they build the actuators to our specifications. Uh, they take, they've taken standard product and modified it for our needs. And, and that's worked out very well for us over the years. We don't have a separate single board or a dual board. We have a board and that board will run up to two gates, um, which really gives us a huge advantage uh, for a guy that's trying to service our product because he doesn't have to carry single and dual boards on his truck or inventory them. Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot easier for them to, to service. And you'll see, go back to some of our earlier videos uh, when we cover some of the other brands or one of the other brands, the Spooky Controls. Um, you'll notice that we've got a lot more stuff inside there. We've got a battery included. We don't have to go buy all that stuff separately. So when you buy all that, you're buying a package rather than yeah. just each individual component. And that each individual component thing is designed to make it appear more cost effective than it really is once you start really looking into how many cycles a day you're going to run it and what all you need to make it work. Mm -hmm. Whereas a, these guys are giving you a package. So if you buy a single operator, you're getting a single operator plus the plus the board and the controls and the battery. If you get a double, I think you guys have a double package too, don't you? We so you did, get a double yeah. package. Mm -hmm. We'll have links to all this stuff down below and we'll make sure that uh, you guys know exactly what you need if you're looking for this stuff so you can purchase it here and get a better setup. But. We, we try to do plug and play as much as possible because does we, the come with the receiver it comes with the receiver Sorry. okay all of our operators will come with a receiver and two remotes two two button remotes wow you don't have to buy all that separate no and and if you buy a solar operator you get the panel if you buy an AC operator you get the little transformer okay so all of our operators are based on are powered by a 12 volt DC automotive battery. It's a 30. Our, we suggest a 35 ampere hour size U1 battery. We will provide typically weeks of standby power with this battery. Plenty of juice for our operators and and uh, and, and works well solar or AC. So we have a charge controller. We have a receiver. We have a control board and we have an entrapment siren. They're all separate components. Because we feel if one fails, you shouldn't have to replace a, com a complete control board necessarily. You'll notice the display toggles between battery voltage and incoming amperage. So from a troubleshooting perspective, this is, this is textbook. Because you've got your homeowner out there, he calls up and says that, that something's kind of funky on his gate you know, and in your first, and someday that battery will fail. We use an automotive battery because A, they're locally available just about anywhere, and B, they're designed for the widest range of environmental extremes for, for, because that they go into cars, so they have to operate in high heat and they have to operate in bitter cold, and, and that's why we use that style battery. On the other operator that we focused on that had, when you did buy their battery control product, you were getting two 7 amp hours, so that only gives you 14 amp hours. This is giving you 35 amp hours versus that 14. So that's a lot more capacity for those overcast days to be able to continue running your gate operator. So the big thing there is to make sure you've got enough solar incoming solar. And in our area, what he's talking about is, is the sun's a lot lower. And in the winter time, we have a lot of trouble trying to get enough solar power from the panel. So it takes a bigger panel up north than it does here in the south. So all of our operators, whether they're swing gates or slide gates, will run off of this battery and they'll run off of this charge controller. So if you're gonna operate off of solar, you're going to take a solar panel, okay, mount it somewhere where it's going to get full sun, and then that solar panel will plug into the charge controller. Holy buckets, did you see that? Did you see that here? I want to show you again. Done. Done. I just hooked it up. I'm a genius. What kind of degree do I have to get to do this? 
Am I qualified? Uh, I think you got <laughs> it. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> passed. Yeah, I passed. I need a certificate on the way out, please, that says that I know how to install a solar panel on your operator. If I could get that printed up. Yeah, okay. AC charger is the same. Okay. Okay. Solar so, technician. Yeah, you've so, just been yes. trained on both. So, so if, if, it's a sol if it's an AC operator, instead of a solar panel, you're going to take this little $30 transformer and you're going to plug it into the same place. Oh, golly, though. that's See, but, I know how to do this. Okay, we did that just a second ago. What, now, what do I do with this? Oh. Yeah. I don't know. This this isn't USB. I, what do we do with that? <laughs> okay. Actually, Greg, you should talk about the USB port on the top of the charger. All right. Also on the on the charge controller, we have a USB port, and this is because late in the afternoon, we get calls from installers that are out there working on gates, and we've noticed that they'll say, you know, it's not working. We go. Let us know what the dip switch settings are. And things will go quiet for about two or three minutes while they, then they come back and they say, okay, four, six, and eight are on. I say, well, okay, you know, what's the, what's the potentiometer setting on this? And things will go quiet. Well, it turns out that late in the day, their cell phones are dying and they've got them plugged into the cigarette lighter adapter in their pickup. And they're running back and forth between the gate and the pickup, and our guys are on hold. So we put a USB, we put a USB port on our charge controller, so they can charge their phone while they're at the, the gate talking to us. That has actually proven to be a very popular feature, especially up in the like a lot of the guys that I talk to up north. And when it gets cold, obviously, if you have your phone out there more than 10 minutes and the battery kind of freezes up. They'll plug it into there and they never even have that issue. Well, we've, we've actually considered a beer holder on the side of the box too. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like a good idea, but there could be some liability issues. Just going to throw that out there. Uh, this is our receiver. It's a 433.92 uh, megahertz receiver, so it gets good range. The, the higher the frequency, the typically the more range you get from your receiver. It has two channels, so it has two relays in it. The P1 relay is a momentary. That's normally what's wired into the uh, auto close, mm -hmm. gate open auto close circuit. The second relay can be programmed either for momentary or lat. It's got 1.4 amps, 12.9 volts with the charger hooked up now. I figured for video purposes you might want to see that. The standard transmitter that comes with the unit is a two button transmitter. We have an optional four button transmitter. So with a two button transmitter, typically one button is, is programmed to P1, which is a momentary, and the other button can either can be trans programmed to P2, which could be latch. So if you want to hold the gate open, you could use P2 button. And the same thing holds true for our keypads. You can program a code that will yeah. just be a momentary, one time entry, or you can program a code that's a latch code. And so these are wireless without taking a lot of draw. Oh yeah, they're, they're, they can be. That particular one you're holding can be wired back to the unit if you want to. If you want to bypass the lithium battery that's in it, it comes with a one lithium battery. It can have up to two lithium batteries in it at one time, which are about four years of life. And um, or you can run two wires and power it off of that battery and never have to worry about batteries. Even with a latch code. Yeah. Wow. For those of you listening, a latch code is a code that will hold the gate open. So it'll it'll hold it open until you put that code in a second time, and then it'll release that code and allow the gate to close. So if you have a party, let's say one night, and you know you're gonna have 20 guests showing up and you don't wanna give them all the code to your gate, you can hit the latch code, latch the gate open for the duration of the party, and then at the end of the party, you can unlatch the gate and it'll basically close. The other way to do that is with the seven day timer, they're gonna show you um, if you just wanted it open, let's say every day from eight till five, you could program that. Yeah. To and both of those situations are predicated by the fact that you are using the automatic close feature. If you yeah. don't use automatic close feature, you can just open it and leave it open, obviously. Yeah. So the other thing about about this and having 42 codes is that you could you could have 42, 42 transmitters, each with its own unique code. So the guy that has 20 employees, he gives all those employees their own transmitter with their own code. He keeps a log of what code those those employees have. Now Bubba decides to go to Las Vegas and takes his and for, you know for life to, for for his lifetime or whatever, he takes his transmitter with him. You don't have to call everybody else's transmitters back and redo codes. You just erase Bubba's code in the receiver and give Skeeter an, another transmitter with with another code for Skeeter. Little simple things. The the uh, uh, 
terminal strip is a, is a phoenix strip so it comes off you can wire it wire it in your hand and then put it back in instead of fumbling around in the panel itself kind of nice um, we've got auto resettable fuses on here so if there is a mechanical jam in the system someplace and you blow uh, you open those fuses they automatically reset you're not looking around for a uh, fuse, if, you know, that, that you may not have What he's on saying you. is these fuses, they need to stay on the board. Don't take them off and go look for them. <laughs> they, they stay on the board. Yeah. I will permanently disable that port if you take that off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike mentioned all of our boards are set up for uh, two-gate operation. What do you guys do, what do you recommend for loop detectors? Because obviously we need loop detectors and those, um, are you using like the LMA 1800? Well, I personally, I like the Diablos. They're yeah. very low current. You know, again, we, we try to stick in that one to two milliamp current draw. A loop, especially a free exit loop, is something you can't turn off. It has to be on all the time because it's waiting for a signal. So uh, that's, that's one of those devices, like a receiver, that just has to be powered at all times. So yeah, your choice. Uh, the, the, the thing you really have to watch out for is there are a lot of people that make loop detectors that say it's, you can use this on a, on a solar system. Really what they mean is it'll work on 12 volts. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's solar friendly. That's our term. Yeah. Is just because it works on 12 volts doesn't mean it's low current. And that's really the key word there, low current. So I know that Diablos are low current. Um, there are some other ones out there, like you know, that will that are very low current. But that's the key: get one that's in a one to two milliamp current draw. And I don't know. The EDI makes a solar solar friendly. I yes, guess, I've, I've heard the EDI has one now. I haven't personally tested those or tried them out. I personally have Diablos on my gates at home, and we have Diablos out here on our gates, and I know they work. So I, Would you recommend anybody installing one of these operators without any loops? Um, loops, you, you, I, I would not recommend installing them, you, you know, having some type of safety device. Loops, the advantage of loops is that they are, they, they pick up a stationary vehicle. Uh, some of the buried probes only pick up moving vehicles. So if someone's relying on a buried probe to be their safety device, that's not a very good choice. It's, it's, it might be a good choice for an opening device as a free exit device because all we need is a momentary signal to start the gate. But they're not good for a safety device. So if you want something that's going to pick up a vehicle throughout the entire realm of, of, this, of the uh, gate path, loops are a good choice. That's why I have them on my home. But I also have a, a photo eye across the, the gate path itself. Um, I see all of these as, as like building a system. Um, it's important to build a good system. It's important to build a safe system. Um, I don't have a safety edge, and so if my gate were to hit something, it would it would do some scratching damage or whatever. So I try to make sure that you know it won't ever hit anything. Um, safety edges are more of a, a of a person protector, in my opinion. And uh, I have a side gate, like you should, for people to go through a pedestrian gate, so I don't have to worry about you know pedestrians going through my driveway gates. But, but you would uh, not recommend installing this system without some way to detect a vehicle's presence. Absolutely. Because if you don't, that will eventually close on a vehicle. No well, it's, it's just a matter of time, especially yeah. if you're using an auto close timer. It's, it's just a matter of time. Right. You know, there's a lot of, I know of a lot of gates out across Texas that have been installed since the 80s and they've never hit a trailer coming in. And maybe they have the same three or four guys coming in all the time that know it stays open for 24 seconds. And that's how long I have to get that trailer full of hay in or whatever but yeah it's just my experience is it's just a matter of time before they have to call and get a gate repaired <laughs> you know because it did hit something or took a fender off of one of their trailers in the video i did that was one of one of my huge beefs was is that they're they're out there and they don't talk about any of that stuff and they're not doing anything to detect vehicles sure they're doing a limited amount of things a very minimum very absolute minimum to detect people but no presence of vehicle. Yeah. And you can get into several thousands of dollars of damage pretty easily. I mean, sure if it can. rips your gate off the hinges and you have to replace it, uh, an actuator, yeah. or if it scratches the side of a vehicle, you'd be talking three, four thousand dollars worth of damage Very easy. quickly. Since you brought up photo eyes and, and entrapment devices, I just want to put a little message here on ours. We use a through beam configuration as opposed to reflectors. The through beam is a much more reliable beam than the reflector is. Um, because you've got, you have an actual sender and a receiver, 
and that collimated beam comes right across from one to the other. It's a good strong beam that comes across. It'll blow through dust, dirt, rain, mist, that kind of stuff much better than a, than a, than a reflector wheel where you've got a beam that goes out, hits a little disc, and then comes back to the unit. So that's reliability again is why we, why we go this route. They all come with a conduit box because we want to encourage people to use conduit for all their wiring. We don't want loose wires hanging out there that, that gophers and dogs and cats and cows can eat. Look at all this proper Meat room eaters. for conduits right here. Yep. We actually have enough room to run some conduits up inside the cabinet. You don't have that with spooky controls. You don't have that with the majestic donkey. This is the receiver side that gets mounted near the cabinet itself. It gets hardwired for 12 or 24 volt and it has common normally open, normally closed contacts. We use the normally closed side for our monitored protection. The normally open side is typically what might be used for vehicular protection because you can daisy chain the, the eyes that way. If you don't know what those two things are, think about getting a professional. Yes. This, this is the emitter side that's mounted on the far side of the driveway. It comes with a pair of lithium ion batteries that are good for two to three years. Shut the front door. <laughs> you mean I just said we had to dig across the driveway and now we don't have to dig across the driveway and we can get the reliability and function of a through beam? That's right. Did you just say that? I just said that. Whoa. But you can still but, trench if you want to. We have two. But turns. wait, there's wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. Yeah. <laughs> if you're running, especially if you're running a dual, okay. you're going to have to run wire anyhow yep. over there. We do have terminals in here so you can wire the, the voltage to the unit. So you have your choice of operating off a battery or operating off of hardwired power from the control. It's like That's these guys. Crazy. These guys thought of everything. And we have a premium keypad. The metal keypad has a little nightlight on it. Looks good on a gooseneck. Um, the LED nightlight only comes on at night. It's got a photo eye in it so we don't drain too much battery. The keys are backlit so that when you punch in your code, you know, you can, you can see it at night. Um, it's got a key lock to open and close. Uh, it runs off of a lithium ion battery that's good for two or three years, and you can add another battery to that if you want to that extends the, the battery life maybe four years or more. Or if you want to hardwire it, there are a set of terminals and you can pull 12 volts from the, from the cabinet to the, to the unit itself. Then we also have our handy dandy push to open button. So this is kind of a sexy little guy. Um, this, this is basically a transmitter. It can be mounted outdoor, outdoor duty. You get close to it with your hand, it turns a pretty blue, you touch it, it beeps, turns green. If the battery's low, it turns red. So, um, yeah, and apparently I've got it programmed to my receiver. The original thought process on this was that mom could put this on the kitchen wall and when she sees somebody drive up to the gate, she could let them in without running all over the place looking for her transmitter. Then people on horses decided if they had a tall pole with a button they could push on their, while they're on their horse, they could open their gate from a horse. Then later, four wheelers and ATVs came into play. So now the hunters can mount one of these things on the gas tank of the four wheeler or the ATV, or they can put it on their tractor. We've got a lot of open cab tractors in Texas, not so many probably in Wyoming. But, um, but these babies being, being weather, weather tight uh, are, are fine for those kind of applications. The Patriot operator right here uses the Acme screw and overnight you can not actually, um, it doesn't lock in place quite as well. So if you've got some high winds, this is probably going to be the better, the Ranger is going to be a better operator for you to choose. That once it's locked in there, like they were saying, once that brake engages, that gate's not moving at all. And it has that extremely efficient ball screw design. Which gives you very smooth and very friction-free force and movement. Extremely efficient. A ball screw is about 95% efficient. An Acme screw is maybe 50% efficient, maybe 30% efficient, depending on the pitch and the, and the diameter. But these things are extremely efficient. Because they're so efficient, it, there's, less, there's less load on the motor. So the motors last longer, they run cooler, they last longer. Because they're so efficient, they have to put a brake in the unit to hold the load in place. These depend on, a, an Acme screw driven unit depends on the friction to hold the load in place. But these have a brake, it's a, 
It's a wrap spring brake, it's hard to explain, but that's why this unit will hold the load in place better than even this one does. Um, think about that when you're choosing which operator to purchase. This may be the Ranger, may be the better option for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> another, another neat little feature on the, on the Ranger series is that we have a, a, like a universal swivel adapter on the end here. So that little swivel gives us a little misalignment compensation in case you don't have everything just perfectly parallel and, and plumb. But also, especially on a dual, when you're trying to get those leafs to match up exactly, you can just screw this little baby in and out a fraction of an inch to give you that final adjustment. I really like this. Because we do have a phone app. So for the guy that wants to open his gate from anywhere in the world, we do have the next gate smart smartphone app. And it is a separate module that plugs into the board. I don't have it hooked up right now. It plugs into the board. It operates off of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So if you have Wi-Fi at the gate, you can operate your gate from anywhere in the world. You can see and monitor whether your gate's open, closed, who you can give uh, privileges to up to 10 secondary users, and you can tell who opened it and who closed it if, if you're, the, if you're the, uh, the primary owner. You can set schedules, you can look at the history, there's a lot you can do uh, with... So this takes a place, or could take the place of a seven-day timer? Yes, I think so. You know, typically, mm -hmm. this one of the biggest features people like is that they can see what time the maid arrived or the yard worker arrived because it's going to show a history. Mm -hmm. And you can go back to whatever day you want to choose, and you can see the history. That's a, that's a couch. This is the Patriot. This is the one you saw in there on the table. So this has got the metal cabinet? Yeah, it's got the metal cabinet. So this is going to yeah, be there. That's the gate lock. Lock, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. So there's the, this one's in a little bit more rapid start mode for a small gate. Lock kind of makes a, a louder closing sound because it does latch in. But here you can see there's an actual pin. So yep. this is the manual release. You know, if you want to put it on a manual, you pull that pin out or you put a lock through it. Um, we've seen people put, you know, modified hitch pins and such through there too if they want a better lock on it. Now I have a question and I don't know the answer to this I guess. What of this hardware is included or right do we here. have to come up with? That's it right, right here. Funny you should ask. Aha, uh -huh, well, <laughs> looky there. It's like he was going to okay. answer our question before I I'm asked I'm going to actually show you that what you're looking at there is not actually the way we recommend installing it because this was a, a quick build display. These are the two pieces that come with every unit, whether you're getting a Ranger line or a Patriot line. Now, the beauty of this is just the simplicity of installing it. So if you have, let's take this gate for instance. You can see that we already have the brackets on it. So really all you have to do, let's imagine for a second here that we had a cross rail going through the middle and that's where we want to put this opener. All we really have to do is line up the center line. If I have a two inch, let's say I have a piece of two inch coming across here, all I have to do is line this up on this post in line with that two inch. We know that's where our gate bracket is going to be. So now without having to do a lot of measuring, we can eyeball this, put a level on it and we can weld that in place. Now, how far back you set this will determine will be determined by how much your hinge space is. But basically what you're going for on a Patriot and an HD, for instance, you're going for a dimension of, uh, for this pivot point here, you're going for a dimension of 13 inches back from the center of the hinge, six inches this way from the center of the hinge, gate being in the closed position right now. So once I have this mounted, all I have to do is hold this, I can actually rest this on here and I can use my measuring tape until I get into the 13 inch mark and that's where I know I need to cut this. So now I make one cut on this bar and it will now fit in to this bracket and I can slide it back this way to get the six inch dimension. So you follow me? So I've got this, I cut it off, it's now shorter, I install it, I know I'm at the 13 and now I can either adjust this way or I can slide the whole tube back and forth uh, through here. Now another thing, you know, we have some installers that prefer not to use this. They just put it, put it right on the back here because on a four inch post, you almost always end up real close to six inch right there. But on a round post, this becomes universal in the sense that 
you really don't have a flat surface so you turn it vertically and you can come around that round post you'll have to measure to, to make the cut prior to doing this but once you have this cut to where you know you're at the 13 inch mark now you can just rotate this around until you get it to the six inch mark and then it just welds into place so you have a good solid weld on a round post you have good welds on a on a uh, square post you can come off the back side really easily uh, other guys that don't want to look at the open end of a tube so they'll put this on here and that'll be in here you have freedom to move it so it takes it takes a lot of guesswork out but with this one guy can put all the brackets on in less than 15 minutes this also works as a push to open if this were a gate that pushes out but we want the actuator on the inside this bracket is universal and you can now turn it around the other way and our tube would come out this direction to form a push to open because you know we have to get the operator out on the outside of the gate here so that it can push it and still have that leverage so it's a very universal bracket set that comes with every unit it gives you multiple ways of mounting it on a round post a, a square post push to open pull to open and uh, just makes life easier for the guy that has to put it on anybody that's ever set up the geometry on a swing gate knows that that can suck now today and today only if you order a gate down below with one of these links down below we will throw that in 100 percent free but if you wait until tomorrow it's 500 dollars. <laughs> get your gate today and those are free hey don't wait notice on all their gates though they have halfway decent hinges i would implore you if you're going to do even if you're going to do a simple ranch gate get some halfway decent hinges the little j hinges those are crap they're garbage there are washers and bushings that come with the pin that goes through here and those those washers and those bushings are sacrificial so those bronze bushings will wallow out over a period of five or ten years instead of wallowing out the the hole on the adapter of the actuator. You, you've got a nickel dime part to replace. You need some of these. You have to have that. Thompson, you know what's missing? A plank. <laughs> yeah, that's. We'll walk the plank. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's where we throw in the bad employees off. Come on, get over here. Come on, close. Can't let anybody else. Can you, Mark? Okay. Mark, okay. what was up there? Hey, shh. We can't tell anybody else, but I'll tell you what was up there. You got to promise. You promise? I trust you guys. You no, guys are with I don't me. Promise. You don't promise. I don't promise. Uh, these guys promise. Okay, so what was up there is it's all the Oompa Loompas that are disgruntled from the chocolate factory. They got them up there working. They're building the operators right up top. Now, don't tell anybody because we'll get in some serious trouble. I don't know what kind of labor laws there are on Oompa Loompas, but they work pretty hard. Work for like candy and stuff. It's strange but yeah that's what's up there oompa loompas so we're way over our spec uh, this gates this gates stout for sure this operators basically got a pad mount base because that stand was here when we bought the building but there is a receiver in the bottom of the of the mounting plate for that with a for a four inch post okay so if, if you're out there in the field and you want to you know Mounted one single four inch? One single yep. four inch post is all you need. And, uh, I don't think you're going to get that. It's 46 this feet. Battery. Four. This battery. And then six. This battery it's the, the big one. It's AC. But this is, this is the HD. This is where we had a few. We actually split steel the first time. We broke welds the second time. This is what we had to do to keep it steady on this gate so that we could yeah. test our actuators. Huge. But you can hear, I mean, this thing works. This is a really strong opener, probably the strongest linear actuator in the business, and you'll hear it, it strains. This is a big gate, and then you put a little bit of wind, and you don't realize how much wind resistance is on these pickets, but there's a lot of wind resistance provided by all those pickets, and this is what, eight foot tall? Maybe a little more? Nine and a half. Nine and a half, yeah. yeah. Including barbed wire. Surface area adds up. And then you get that wobbling like that, that'll mm -hmm. turn some stuff up. Blew in these pickets right here. Yeah. You can see the whole gate frame. I mean, this thing is even if it, but even if it goes into that slow down mode and, and, it, and it, it senses a high amp condition and it has to speed up again, it will always make it to your limit switch. It's never going to stop short of that limit switch, no matter what the condition is. Two hinges, good two, hinges. three is no, no good. No need for three, no need for If four. you have three, one's always in a bind, I guarantee it. It's just the concrete. concrete. <laughs> I think a leaf spring might be snapped. 
That's something. Okay. We uh, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. On that roof is 100,000 watts of solar panels that are coming down into our grid system. Those are our cutoffs that you see right there. We are actually net zero. We don't use any electricity. We generate as much as we use every year. The federal government, as part of the I want you, energy saving stuff that they've got, an energy deal, has, has said that homeowners doing solar are available to get a tax credit. And that tax credit is 22% of the cost of your solar installation, the, the cost of the equipment, the cost of accessories. It just happens that solar gate operators qualify for that solar tax credit. So all of our solar operators will come with this solar tax certificate. And a homeowner can download um, form 5695 it's, it's a simple completion. They put down the operator that they purchased and they can take a 22% direct credit off their taxes for the price of the solar gate operator, the installation of the gate operator, and the accessories. So let's say that that total installation is, if it's $5,000, that's a $1,000 tax credit off the bottom line on their taxes. Well, Mike, I want to thank you for your tour and everything, and Greg. Thanks for coming out of your way and stopping to see us. We do appreciate it. So we'll be putting all this together. There will be links down below, so check those out. If you want a good solar-powered gate operator, the guys here at US Automatic can hook you up, and we're more than happy to work with you to help you get a proper solar setup for your ranch gate or your uh, ranchette gate or whatever it may be. So and until next- well, And they work well on AC also. <laughs> and they, yeah, they will actually plug into AC. If you know what to do with that little two-prongy thing, I, I don't know. If you know what to do with that, you can hook it up to AC. But until next time, Mark Olson with SWI and you have a good dang day. You're gonna mount those by the gate, how far they need to be? Uh, right on the latch post. I'm gonna punch you in the throat. Okay, <laughs> minimum of six feet. <laughs>